Hello, everyone, and welcome to Oregon Basketball with Beth Smith. Joe John Sante along with the coach. Uh, coach, a disappointing loss against the Beavers. Give them a lot of credit, though. I thought they pretty much took it to your team, and it was tough when you got down early to respond to that. Well, they did. They had a very good, very good game. I thought they started very well on their home court. They came out. They uh, needed a rebound game against uh, after that loss at UCLA, and uh, we knew that it was going to be an emotional game. We knew their three seniors were going to be up for it. We felt that we had a good practice throughout the week, and we were ready to respond for that. to that. I thought we did respond to it, but only after about 10 minutes, and it's way too much to give a team like Oregon State or anybody in the Pac-10 a 14-point head start. Confidence-wise, did you feel like your team wasn't playing with the kind of confidence that maybe that we've seen them play with lately? Well, I think that was uh, something a little bit frustrating for all of us because I thought we had a really good week of practice. We competed hard. We uh, rebounded with each other. We pushed each other. Uh, we were really intense, and we lost that in the first 10 minutes. I don't know whether it was just how hard they came out. We hit a little bit of adversity, and we didn't respond right away. You know, But we took a timeout. We tried to get other players in the game. And I think we, ha we sort of stopped the hemorrhaging, but by that time, 14 points up, they feel good about their game, and we have got to work doubly as hard to get anything back. Well, something new on the show. I always ask you what you say to the kids, and the fans always want to know what you're saying to the athletes when they're in the huddle. So why not go into the huddle? Something new before we go to the highlights. In the huddle with the team before the game started against the Beavers. In the huddle with head coach Beth Smith. One thing we know, Coach, is that it's loud in the huddle. I mean, how do you keep your voice the whole game? It, it's very loud, I think. Uh, and that's the great thing about playing a, a rivalry game, particularly at Oregon State or even at Mac Court, is that there's a lot of noise. And so really you have to try and uh, get things to be understood. And, uh, you know, I'm yelling, so it's mm -hmm. hard for them because they're so close to me. But I think that uh, one of the things that we talked about uh, in that game or in that pregame huddle was certainly rebounding and how important that was. And we just didn't get back and do the job that we needed to, I thought, the game here, that's what we did very well, and there we just let it slip away from us. You talked about that, Coach, the rebounding. You also talked about trying to keep them searching for shots, but they went inside, and they got a lot of easy early looks at the beginning of the game, and that can really help a team's confidence. Well, game. certainly, the game is one in the paint, and they really hurt us in the beginning in the first few minutes. They went post to post. They felt they had that advantage. One thing that Oregon State does a lot is that they have a, a lot of different number of sets where they go to different players. And we did a pretty good job on the game that we played here, taking those sets away. Uh, what they did this time, however, is they just played basketball, and sometimes that's the hardest thing to stop, particularly when you have a player like Brianna Cheney who is on, who is, she's hot, and she's just feeling it, and she had a whale of a game. Nice pass there by Eleanor Herring. I think, uh, or make it Jesse Shedders. Well, it was Herring on the pass, sorry. Bills with the basket. Uh, you settled the game down at this point as Shedders here scores the hoop. Settle it down a little bit. Still down a lot, but at least you stopped there running and settled it down. Well, we, we began to play hard defensively, and here we have a nice post-to-post -post pass from Dre to Jesse, which is a great score and, and something that we'll see Jesse do more as she becomes a more veteran player. But the previous uh, replay was Eleanor driving to the hoop. That's what we needed to do. That's how we needed to be aggressive offensively. We needed to get to the free throw line. We shot three free throws in the first half, and that's just not going to get it done against any Division I Pac-10 uh, team. Another good jumper by Eleanor Herring. She's coming up, coming on. She seems to be playing very well. You know, Eleanor was 5 for 11 last night, and, and we're asking her to do a lot of things, play the four positions, score inside, score outside, defend a, a taller, bigger player, and she's really doing very, very well for a freshman. I'm not sure we can ask her to do that much more. Perhaps maybe a few more rebounds would be nice, but she is going to be a player that is going to be a go-to player for a long time for us. Carolyn Gaines inside. She's uh, getting a, little, a few more minutes now. She's back from an injury and uh, you know, hit, got some big hoops in this game. Well, she did, and I think that's very positive for her, and it's very positive for us because she's an important player. And right now she's learning to understand that she's just not a shooter, but people will take that away, so you got to slice to the basket, you got to post up, you got to come with that. So, and give, be a little bit more versatile. She's, she's really doing that right now. The Mrs. Zawa drive there makes it 27-16. to 16. The Beavers have the 11-point lead. How about Corey? How's she doing? Corey's doing well. I think she's a little beat up, and I think she's a little tired, but I thought... 
this was one of her best games, her most aggressive games, that she, as you can see there, taking the ball to the hoop. And we just have to try to get in that kind of mentality, and I thought we did it near the latter part of the first half and beginning the second half. How about Corey's knee? She uh, hurt it towards the end of the game. Yeah, she um, looks like she hyperextended a little bit. She got hit kind of like a hip check, and uh, it's going to be sore, I think, today, but she's a real uh, warrior, and she'll be back on the practice floor this week, I'm sure. Ducks try to finish the half strong and get themselves back in the game. Andrea Bills breaks a big drop there, scores inside, and then Randy Davis really gives Oregon some momentum going into the break. No good. Shedders with the rebound. Plenty of time. Eight seconds for Corey. Flips it out. Right wing Davis for a three ball. Yes. Well, I think um, there's the key right there, Joe. I think look at our defensive end. See Jesse, everybody blocking out. We get a great rebound, a great outlet. Corey's pushing the ball. She knows where she is. Is Brandy runs the floor, has got some rhythm, got some momentum, and that's the kind of basketball that we want to play, but it's predicated on those defensive rebounds. But you got a lot of momentum going to the break, so they're in striking range after that Davis three pointer. They're never really able to get it over the hump, though, against the Oregon State Beavers. We've got the second half coming up for you right after this on Oregon Basketball with Bev Smith. Welcome back to the show. Let's go ahead and get into the second half highlights at Gill Coliseum. Pretty good crowd on hand as well, cheering on the Beavers and lots of Duck fans. As well. They were giving away free tuition if they called your name and then you were there. I don't think the person was actually there, so they didn't win it. But uh, trying to find ways to get more people there. Eleanor Herring comes out, and uh, it's a 10-point lead. And at this point, I'm thinking it's anybody's ball game right now. Well, I think so. I think that we felt good going in the locker room, only being down what we were. I believe. Uh, 11 points, 13 points, and, and at the beginning of the second half, we wanted to start aggressively. We had the ball out of bounds, so we just set up a little isolation play for Eleanor, and she did what we needed her to do, and we hoped that would set the tempo for us. But then, you know, you have this young lady who came back, and that's a tough shot, and uh, that really hurt us and took away a little bit of the momentum we might have created. Nice fake there by Andrea Bills. Nice pump fake, and she scores. It's 37-25, and then Herring is all alone on the inside, makes it 39-27. to you, You're kind of going back and forth between that 14 to 9, 10-point range, but you can never get that little run to get it to 6 or 5. Well, we needed some stops defensively, and we never got those that really took them and frustrated them a little bit to make them question themselves if they could score. I thought offensively here, Brandy is being aggressive and, and doing what we needed to do, but really, you chip away on the defensive end. And, and they came up big with some big shots. You've got to credit them a couple times. But, you know, I think that our defensive efforts have to be more consistent. And uh, that would certainly help uh, take away that confidence uh, an opponent might have. Randy's shot there cuts it to nine. It's pretty much as close as it was able to get. Rena Chain drives, scores, gets fouled. A three-point play. It goes right back up to 14. Chelsea Wagner, though, keeping the unit with a three-point shot. And uh, how is Chelsea's knee? Is it starting to affect her a little bit? I think so. I think she's running a little bit on empty with it. Which, I know she had a drain just before the game. And it's, uh, it's certainly something that's, I think, keeping her out of practice. And, and that's a, a real important key for her because to stay in game shape, you need to have that opportunity to practice. But she's going to keep on going and giving us what she can. Again, we have some great ball movement and get another three from Brandy. And that execution we needed ready from the get-go, and I felt had we come out defensively hard and ready to execute, I think that perhaps it would have been a different different game. So Corey Mississawa hits a very tough shot right there. It's still a 10-point game, about halfway through the half, and then they go on a little bit of a run here to put the game away. Holly Chapman at three makes it 57 to 42, and then Shannon Howell on the fast break. At this point, Coach, it becomes pretty difficult when they, they got the run that your team was looking for. Yeah, we absolutely needed that run, and I think that uh, they got some breaks. We tried to do some double teaming against Chapman, and she was, uh, excuse me, against Cheney, and she was really composed. She found her other post player in Chapman, and she drilled a three, and so that really took the win out of our comeback sales and made it just much more difficult. Coach, you talked about rebounding early. I mean, you can say it over and over and over again. How do you get the kids to actually do what you're telling them to do? Well, I think it's it's just accountability. We work on it every day. Uh, we had a big rebounding drill. It's it's uh, competing every day. I think one of the things we're doing better in, in practice right now is we're going hard to the offensive rebounds so that that is what it's like in competition. But it's it's a matter of sometimes we're just we are playing against more athletic teams and therefore when that happens those team rebounds become really important where you tip the ball the ball gets on the floor and it's loose so it's something that we must continue to work on it's something that our players must take to heart 
And that's what we talked about at the end of the game, that coming into Mac Court, we want to defend it this week against Washington State and Washington, and that's how we start doing it, is by rebounding. Energy certainly helps in rebounding. With a home crowd, that could be a big deal for Oregon. As they return to Mac Court for a couple, we'll talk about that. As well, Jesse Shedders. Boy, talk about diversity and interests and all kinds of neat things about Jesse Shedders. You're going to get a chance to meet her coming up next on the show. Welcome back to the show, everyone. When it comes to diversity, no one on the Oregon team has it like Jesse Shedders. She loved the movie Dumb and Dumber. She loves the ultra-serious athlete Marion Jones. She listens to Eminem and other rap before games and may finish off the night by reading a book called The Brave New World. Well, the polar opposites don't end there for the Oregon freshman who's beginning to find her way. Here's Nicola Beta with more. What does the tallest prep recruit in the nation this year do when she has time away from the court and the classroom? She paints pottery, of course. So we decided to tag along one afternoon and discovered that deciding what color paint to choose was a lot harder of a decision than to become a duck, especially considering her mom, are you ready for this, is a beaver. And she had told me, you know, well, um, I want you to go wherever makes you happy. Don't, like, base your decision on whether I'm going to get mad at you or not for being a duck. And even when it comes time for the Civil War, yellow and green are the colors worn in the Shedders household, except during the fall. Football season is a different story because my uncle played for OSU. Um, and so football-wise, she's a beaver at heart, but basketball, she's all about the ducks. And so were Shedders, all six feet, six inches of her. And like most freshmen, there's a period of transition coming from high school to the arena of Pac-10 basketball. But Jessica didn't have the luxury of getting her feet wet. After Katherine Craveld went down, the freshman got the nod. I did come I did come in here expecting to, you know, kind of play behind Kat and mm -hmm. just gain experience that way. And when they kind of just told me, well, you're starting, I was like, well, all right. <laughs> I guess I'm just uh, getting thrown in there. But, um, you know, I think that... Considering the circumstances of, you know, how I, the competition in high school, I think I've done pretty well adjusting. In high school, baskets came easy for Shedders, standing tall above her opponents. In the big leagues, she quickly discovered she had to step it up a notch. And I came here, you know, and I play against people who know what they're doing and um, are just as big as me, if not bigger. And being the tall kid on the block has also been a transition, personally, dealing with the growing pains of sprouting five inches in a single year. I just would hate going anywhere in public just because, I mean, people are rude sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, I know, you know, it's out of fascination, I guess. But at the same time, it just kind of sucks, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so... I just, I mean, I wouldn't even go to the mall or anything. I'd be so self-conscious. But now, you know, I think being around people, especially in college, that are um, closer to my height, that has helped me. And um, now I'm just comfortable with being myself. And it's kind of cool, actually. But I get a lot of attention. I like attention. Now Shedders has found a home where her growth will be on the court, developing into a player to contend with in the conference. And as we discovered over paint and sponges, a tough competitor with a softer side. Nicole Beta for the Oregon Sports Network. And somebody with a great future with the program. I think so. I think Jess is a, a real young player right now. She did uh, want to develop under Catherine. She's going to have that opportunity next year. And I think she's going to be a real important player for the success of the Oregon program. More to come right here on Oregon Basketball with Bev Smith right after this. All right, Coach, back to Mac Court for four of the last six before you wrap it up and then the uh, Pac-10 tournament. Prospects for that, you got the Cougars and the Huskies next. You got a split on this trip before. You beat the Cougars in Pullman. We did. I think it was a very important game for us. We didn't have a great showing against the University of Washington, but bounced back and had a great, I think, team effort, and that's what we'll require for this weekend. We really feel that we can make a home stand. Being back at Mac Court, we've committed to it right in that locker room at OSU, so we're ready to go. Really need a great crowd out for these two games. At MacArthur Court coming up, get out there, support your teams. Thursday and Saturday, Washington State coming up first. For the coach, I'm Joe Johnsante. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week on Oregon Basketball with Bev Smith.